Hey guys, this is Dan with Adventuring Today. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for being here today. I uh, thought I'd give you a couple ideas and tips and tricks around Forescan. Um, I just got done doing a bunch of changes to my uh, Super Duty over there, and today I thought I would try to attempt some of those similar changes to my expedition. So we'll see if we can do this or not. Not sure if we can, but I would try it uh, here while I'm making this video also. So when you, when you hook up your computer um, to your vehicle, you're going to want to buy one of these. Um, there's all kinds of links and ideas and how to ways you can configure, but you need to get a connection to your OBD port. Um, I'm using a hardwire connection. This uh, very reliable, works really well. And uh, when you launch the Forescan software, uh, you're going to want to click on this button right down here, right there, and that is going to can tell your computer to try to connect to the uh, vehicle so it starts loading all these different um, items into the into the software from your uh, engine control module on your vehicle it's asking me now uh, what kind of version of sync that I have and I'm trying to get this to focus here sorry about that but that says uh, sync 3 so let's see if we can get it to focus real quick so, it, it just trust me, it says uh, Sync 3, so I'm going to click OK, and now it's going to continue to load all this different information. So, we're loading in the um, transmission control module, powertrain control module, onboard diagnostics, um, parking aid module, another body control module. So, now it's asking me a question. Uh, this vehicle may contain M scan modules. Does your ELM adapter have a CAN switch? Yes or no? Um, highly recommend you buy one with a CAN switch. So I'm going to click yes on this and I'm going to flip the switch and click OK. So I just flip this switch right here and now we're going to click OK. Uh, and it's already loading. So you know, let's give this a couple of seconds to load up here. And all these different areas are being loaded into the software so um, we've got running board control module um, cruise control control module all these different areas within the vehicle are loading and then you can go in there and make some changes and so a couple things that I did to my super duty I'll talk about this while this is loading here real quick is I wanted to add the temperature of the coolant above the gauge on the display so from the factory all it is is really just a dummy gauge might move a little bit you'll see it when it warms up in the morning going from basically a low setting let's say it's 70 degrees outside up to normal operating range which is around 190 195 200 degrees so you'll see it fill into that but you have no idea what the actual temperature is and so I was able to turn that on so it shows me the actual digital temperature of what uh, the coolant is I added that I also have the ability my truck is a diesel to see how uh, full the uh, particulate filter is in that truck and so I'll, it tells me how close I am to a regen and that one's, that one's valuable. Last night I, um, my wife and I went to a movie, coming home, it was dark out, I added what uh, some people call Bambi mode to the fog lights that allows the fog lights to stay on when your bright lights are on. It really lights up the road a lot better, uh, pretty excited about that change and how bright that was so uh, there's all kinds of things like this you can do with this Forescan software um, so this question now is would you like to save this profile for this vehicle so I'm gonna click yes because it's gonna save the stock profile um, on the vehicle so I've got that saved so what I want to do now is I want to go into um, a module that is called APIM and what I'm gonna try to do is uh, again I don't know if this is gonna work because I've never done it before on an expedition but on the home screen here I want to see if I can get the uh, seat controls the climate controlled seats heating and cooling to show up here on the home screen and so we'll see if we can make that uh, make that happen so you're gonna want to come into this button right here okay come into this button right here click that and then when I look at my Excel spreadsheet that I printed off, we're going to look for 
the if you can read that sorry it's not blurry I don't know why it's not focusing very well um, IP APIM so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna scroll down to where that is give me a second to find that okay IP APIM now there's two choices there's one at the top that says as built format and the other one that is just blank the one that they're asking for here and telling me to use is the regular APIM which is this one so I'm gonna highlight that module and you come down here and you hit the play button and that will bring you into that module so I've got to move this switch back and click OK and now it's gonna load it checking vehicle configuration sync version 3 please make sure the module version is correct warning it is not allowed to use configuration or programming functions in case of wrong version specified and it may cause, may cause module damage if the module version is not correct please remove vehicle profile and reconnect so I'm gonna click OK to that it's just your standard warning okay so in here uh, we're gonna look for that control so you can see here climate control repeaters enabled climate control repeater type is dual uh, country code is United States heated steering wheel icon is enabled seat button icons none so we are going to go into that and we're gonna click edit edit selected which is this button right down here edit selected now um, description seat button icons and you've got these choices from none to ventilated seats to uh, heated and ventilated seats to heated seats so I've got heated and ventilated seats I'm gonna click the check mark there and now we need to write this so I'm gonna click that write button right there write that confirm these changes old value is none new value heated and ventilated seats click the check mark it's writing this new code into the software now it's telling me to cycle the ignition off and then back on so I'm gonna do that so we'll turn the vehicle off got it off I'm gonna wait about 10 seconds and uh, we'll let it just uh, power down a little bit here I was like giving it a little bit of a delay you probably don't have to do that but I do like adding a little delay and then I'm gonna start the vehicle set the camera down real quick start it back up and now as you can see we started back up now we've got the buttons right here on the home screen so if you just touch the buttons you can you know this is like turning on the heated seats you got control over the different temperatures there's cool keep tapping them it'll um, lower how much cool is coming through there so anyway it's literally that easy guys it's literally that easy um, I, I'm using an Excel spreadsheet that I got off of the Super Duty platform uh, forum and I'm using it on my Ford Expedition and um, and so it's really difficult to make mistakes um, a lot of the instructions from car to car to car are going to be the same so don't get worried about that and um, you just have to remember to take your time and uh, just remember what you're changing so if you ever need to go back to it if you accidentally make a mistake um, you can always go back and set it up as stock but it is literally that easy so um, so let's see if we can do another one here real quick um, this one is show temps in on gauges so this is a different module and uh, I'm curious to see if this one is going to work. I don't know if it will or not. So we will we will try. So we're going to um, get out of this area right here. So we're going to hit stop, All right? Stop button, and um, then we're going to come back to configuring and programming, and we're going to look for module IPC. IPC so we'll just scroll down here I found it right here so we're gonna click on that then we're gonna hit the play button and it looks like we've got to move the switch back again so we'll move the switch back on the OBD reader we're gonna load this we're going to get a similar warning 
uh, we're gonna click on that it's gonna load it up now you've got a different set of coding so this is something that's this is the other way that you make changes I'm, I'm happy that this one works this way so that I can show you the way this works so um, if I'm going to show the temperature in the gauges so this would be to add the coolant temperature above the coolant gauge so right now um, the fuel gauge shows how many miles I have left to empty right so it says 301 if you can read that there 301 but there's nothing above the coolant and that's what I want to try to do is add that so we're going to come over to our Excel spreadsheet and on the Excel spreadsheet it's going to give us instructions so it's telling us to look for module 720-0701 720-0701 so I'm going to come over here and look for 720-0701 which is this one right here at the bottom 720, this is where you want to be really careful, 720-0701 and we're going to change these middle numbers right here. So right now it says 6A, 6 Apple, 6 Apple and we want to try to change that to 65. So I'm going to take that A, I'm going to backspace, you see this right here, okay that says 86A0. I'm going to change that to 8650 because that is what my instructions tell me to do. I've got no brake controller on this truck and if that's the case then I need to change that to a 65. Alright and so I have done that and now we're going to click on the write button. So again we have to, we've changed the coding, now we have to write. So we're going to write it. Um, so let's continue anyway. Write the module. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So now we're writing. All right, guys. So I tried a couple times to figure out how to um, set up the temperature gauge above the coolant and the coding I have for the Super Duty will not work on my on my Expedition. So I've got to figure out exactly what that coding number is. So I'm going to make another attempt to make another change so I can show you how to do this uh, other programming. So um, this one is going to be turning on the fog lights while the bright lights are on at the same time. And so we're going to go into this uh, module, to a different module this time. So I'm trying to get you a little bit better light here and we're going to go into fog lights with high beam LED right there it's going to be body control module as built 7262701 7262701 and what we're going to change see that number one right there and that second set of numbers we're going to change that to a zero we're going to go from a one which is the existing value from the factory we're going to change that to a zero we're going to write it and we're going to see if it'll work. So we'll see if it works, all right? Never done this before. Again, we're in you know, virgin territory here, so to speak. But here we are. It's, again, I know it's tough to read, but we are in 726-2701. I'm going to change that second set of numbers from a 1 to a 0. And I'm going to click write, which is that button right here. And let's see if this works. Again, it may not work. Hopefully it does. We will find out. Looks like this one might work this time. So it is fully loading. Alright, so we just had the lights uh, flashed a little bit. You can hear the vehicle making a few dings because we made a change. And so it says that blocks program successfully. Please cycle the ignition off and then back on. So we're going to do that. Gonna turn it off. That's the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> so I've got to get a different code. Like I said, not everything's gonna map over from the Super Duties. So when I try to add that temperature gate, temperature readout above the coolant, um, it wouldn't let me do it because I've got some kind of wrong, the wrong coding or the correct coding for a Super Duty will not work on the Expedition. So I need to figure that out. But this change is working out. So I'm gonna restart the vehicle. 
Got it on. I'm going to close out of this right here. And let's see if the fogs are staying on. So there's the low beam. There's the high beam. Low beam, high beam. And those lights down at the bottom, those are the fogs. So what's going to happen here is next time that we drive this truck around at night, the road is going to be so much brighter because those headlights, when uh, when the bright lights are on, they they shift the light up farther so it can go out farther. But the area right in front of the vehicle down here is a little bit dark. Now all this area down in front of the vehicle is going to be filled in, and so I can see really clearly down here, but also more clearly way out in front of me. So That's especially important on a Super Duty because if you have these um, halogen bulbs, which is what I have on here. Now I've upgraded my headlights and fog lights to LED, but the, these bulbs really do a great job of lighting up everything way, way, way down the road. I mean, it is incredible. Check out my previous video and showing you how bright these lights are at night. But now I'm gonna have the, I have the fog lights turned on while the bright lights are on and it is it might as well be daylight out because it is so bright out there so anyway hopefully that uh, that is helpful in how force scan works um, you know let me pull this cable out real quick so I'll show you what I bought so my cable is uh, I bought this off of Amazon ELM coding uh, it says it's compatible 500 kilobits per second unit. It's got an HS can and MS can. That's the switch right here. Uh, this just plugs right into your OBD2 port. And there's that's our switch. And then it has just your standard USB connection. So I really like this one. I know they sell um, other ones that operate off of um, Bluetooth. Um, you can try one of those if you want. I I'm not even sure which one's more expensive or which one is cheaper. I just know that this one has worked for me. I like the hard wire because I know I've got a really good solid connection that's reliable between the uh, engine the, the engine computer on the uh, vehicle and my computer. Um, if you want to do any kind of um, tracking through an iOS device, you can buy a similar controller to this, but buy the one that shoots out a Wi-Fi signal. iOS devices, you have to use a Wi-Fi signal uh, device. So then you would uh, plug that device into your uh, computer and uh, search for your Wi-Fi, this device in your Wi-Fi setting on your Apple phone, for example, or your iPad. And then you can um, use you know, software you can download, just a simple app to check temperatures and it's really fun to kind of see what's happening with how much horsepower you're generating or how much torque you're generating. Uh, it's pretty cool. If you've got an Android, then you look for a Bluetooth version of one of these uh, to connect and uh, you should be good to go. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful for people who are looking to get into Forescan. Uh, it's, it's just a really great way and very simple way to make these really neat improvements and upgrades to your truck to give you more information. You know, these little changes I made to the Expedition are gonna be nice, but if you've got a, a Super Duty and, and that Super Duty um, happens to be a diesel, you can turn on the ability to watch how fill your particulate filter is getting and, uh, and anticipate when the next regen is gonna, is gonna happen. It, that's just great information to have. So uh, anyway, thanks again for being here today. Thanks for uh, listening to my channel. And if you got any questions, please list those below. Uh, be sure to like it, like the video, and uh, click on that bell and subscribe. And uh, we will see you guys real, real soon. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.